Warning, these tutorial videos do not replace ground school and should be used only for entertainment purposes. Learning on simulators and perhaps as a quick revision before written or practical exams. Although, if you don't know most or all of this stuff, you're in need of serious revision. In other words, you're screwed. Hey guys, welcome to lesson 2. Sorry it took so long to put the new post. Uh, I know I said it would do turns and going up and down and stuff like that, but uh, I didn't get my new camera when I was back in Paris, and I got it after my flight. So I decided, what can I do? What can I do where I don't need videos? So I decided to do traffic patterns. Now we're going to cover three bases. The first part is the longest, the two are the two other quite short. Uh, so basic traffic patterns, special traffic patterns, which check traffic patterns in France. So let's go. Basic traffic pattern. Now here is a simple traffic pattern. It can go from both sides depending on the airport. Sometimes just one, uh, either left, uh, left or right. And there are four legs in the traffic pattern. Two numbers, two seven and zero nine. Now these numbers aren't random. They represent the direction in which you land uh, with the two first numbers of the of the bearing of the runway. So runway two seven will probably be between can be a bearing between two sixty five and two seventy four. And same goes for the zero nine, it can be a bearing of ninety five uh, of ninety four to uh eighty five. Now normally when you take off uh, you take off uh, facing the wind, so We'll take the example that I'm using. If uh, the wind has a direction of 090, or in other words, east, you are going to take off from the runway 27, which is west. Now, this is the upwind leg, also known as the partial leg, but on the radio, you're most likely to use upwind. Now, here, this is where you take off and you're initially climbing. Okay, now this is the crosswind. Crosswind is just a 90 degree angle to the runway and you are just giving yourself some space to be able to uh, turn um, not very sharply when you land because you're going to be at a slow velocity and you're going to want to do uh, nice and shallow turns. This is the downwind. Now with downwind you have the wind uh, pushing you so it'll make you go faster than your airspeed indi air indicator shows. But um, the uh, air traffic controllers prefer to integrate planes into the downward simply because it's the longest leg in the pattern and allows them to control things uh, more easily. This is the base leg. At this point if the airfield has multiple runways which are parallel to each other they will tell you which runway to land so that you know when to turn and uh, it's pretty much where you have the highest pitch of descent and you should be ready for landing by then. And finally, we've got final. <laughs> Get it? Finally, final? Hey, screw you guys. It's a good joke. The final leg is where you lower a bit your pitch or higher it, depending if you're too high or low. It's at this point that you decide whether you're going to land or go around. And uh, there's nothing much to say about it. It's just the most exciting leg you get. So yeah, those are the four basic... Uh, legs of a traffic pattern and uh, so that's all you need to know in normally for most airfields I'd say pretty much all of them and uh, you should integrate into downwind and most air controllers will make you integrate there but if you want you can integrate on in the other ones except of course for uh, for the uh, departure but really it's recommended uh, integrating in downwind because that way you get to have a good visual uh, of the airfield so there are some airfields which uh, the temp pattern is a bit different and I'm going to take as an example Courchevel which is a mountain airfield in the Alps in France. So here on the right you got a uh, page from the air charts of the Courchevel airfield and as you can see it's not a, tr a traditional traffic pattern. In fact there's three legs on this and uh, the reason for this is that you can only land in one direction which means you can only take off in one two. The reason for that is that it is, um, the mountain is right behind it, going up, and there's a slope. So it would actually be impossible to land on the field the other way. Therefore, uh, there's that. And there's also the fact that you cannot miss, you cannot go around. If you feel like slightly uncertain about the landing, you have to uh, quickly turn around and uh, go as fast as you can so you don't stall, especially when you're in the mountains. 
So on the left here, I showed you a quick diagram, just a, a small extract from the air chart of what the pattern is like. This is the actual slope of the runway. So as you see, to slow down the plane due to the shortness of the runway, you don't use uh, just air, uh, air drag and the resistance of the ground on the wheels to slow down. You actually use gravity. And that's the only way to slow down the plane. Because although you think, well, hold on, 500... 500, 600 meters, that's quite a lot to land on. It is for a Cessna, but that airfield actually carry uh, 20 passenger planes. And they're a lot bigger and need normally a longer landing distance. Okay, so we looked at a special traffic pattern of Courchevel. Of course, there are several different types and special traffic patterns. Uh, but to know if there is a special traffic pattern, you just have to look into the airport chart of the uh, particular airfield. And to do that is quite simple, but it can cost a lot of money in some cases. For example, if you're an international uh, pilot and you want to fly in another country, you might use Jeppesen because they do all airfields in the world pretty much. But they cost a lot of money. And in France, you can actually get every single airfield for free on the website uh, right there, which you can click on to go straight to the, to the search bar of the website for the airport chart. Uh, you can also do the fourth bullet point, and that would also work. Uh, if you don't speak French, then just follow the instructions. Well, that was it for lesson two. Hopefully I'll do lesson three sometime soon, and it hopefully won't be as mundane, and I'm sorry. But these are th essentials that you have to know. I'll see you around. Warning! These tutorial videos do not replace ground school and should be used only for entertainment purposes. Learning on simulators and perhaps as a quick revision before written or practical exams. Although, if you don't know most or all of this stuff, you're in need of serious revision. In other words, you're screwed.